I have on the line um, external communications manager, external communications manager Emma ECG. Your friend Leila Abubaka, menino ebe chuchu komo anope. Um, Leila, me ma kwa ba eba happy morning show so anope. Good morning to you and welcome to the happy morning show. <laughs> Thank you. I was I was wanting to know whether I was going to speak to you because when I have to speak to you, I have to calibrate my brain so no, that I can. Don't worry, don't worry. I think we'll we'll do English. <laughs> Patty would help me with the translation. Into, All right. Yes. Great. Thank um, you. ECG has been embarking on a revenue mobilization drive in the course of the week. Uh, how, how how has it gone so far? No. Um, have you received the kind of response you wanted prior to embarking on this particular drive? No, I think it's been excellent. Um, first of all, um, I just want to thank all Ghanaians who have really supported and understood the position of ECG in embarking on this project. Um, usually we are at the <laughs> end of the stick when uh, we want to take our monies for various reasons. But it looks like this time we've really had a lot of public support, which is really helpful. I think we're able to tell our story properly and people understand that sometimes it is not just the fault of ECG uh, in their inability to collect some of these monies. And we've been able to take some of the media with us to see how um, or the challenges that we go through when we actually want to collect monies from some of these organizations. There are so many tricks to it. And usually when you're not in the business or when you're not on the ground, you wouldn't appreciate the challenges that the organization goes through to retrieve um, its money. But it's been so good. Um, mm. This week, for instance, we have been able to collect at least um, half the amount that is owed us on the spot, okay. or we go on disconnection. Um, we have visited several hundreds of companies and households spread across our operational regions. And we're yet to get the figure for how much we have been able to collect so far. Mm. So I can say, yes, it's it's been good. It's been Very good. Well. Leila, um, before embarking on this revenue mobilization drive, um, on your books, how much is ECG owed? Well, I cannot, I do not have the clearance to review that. It is definitely more than 5.7 billion Ghana cities. Um, the 5.7 billion Ghana cities is only for a period a period of about five months um, from September 2023, um, September 2022 to February 2023. And um, before that, um, many companies owe us legacy debt. There are other um, individuals that owe us, but that is not the focus for now. We had a glitch in our system. And for that reason, we weren't able to send out bills, weren't able to go out to collect monies because we had to fix our system. Um, so it's that gap that has caused the severe um, drainage in our revenue collection. Mm -hmm. And so I know there's more out there, but okay. for this period, we are just concentrating on the 5.7 billion um, orders. You've spoken about uh, glitches in the system, but um, again, one would wonder why it would take ECG so long uh, to chase a debt of about, say, 42 million Ghana CDs and all. Uh, Madantina, why has it taken ECG so long to get out there and chase monies that are owed the company? Okay, so by 42 million, I think you are referring uh, B5 to... B5 Plus. B5 Plus, That's right. So, so B5 Plus, to be fair on B5 Plus, they've been quite um, forward when they are paying. They, they pay their bills up. But um, <laughs> when you look at how some of these companies go about um, expending their monies when they make their income. It's interesting. It's a big sum of money they have to give ECG. Sometimes the decision is why don't we divert some of these monies into other operational um, areas in the company before we sort out our electricity bills? And um, why don't we put it in other ventures that will generate some sort of a profit and then we can take the principal and pay back uh, ECG? Sometimes too, it's just um, something that they, they cannot come up with immediately. But our argument is when you're running a business, the line item in the, um, for, for instance, with a steel company like B5, you'd always need energy. And so why don't you make it a priority? And so that's the kind of conversation we're having with B5 and the rest that 
if energy is such a priority in your production process, why don't you make it a priority in your payment process as well? Um, it's not any fault of ECGs that these bills have racked up. I have been on the field and I've experienced the kind of conversations that go on when we actually pursue our bills. It's not as if ECG doesn't pursue the bills on a monthly basis. They fall under a region. There's a regional manager. He has a docket of all the companies that owe every month, and he sends his officers out there to collect the revenue. However, when you get there, sometimes there's so much, uh, for lack of a better word, maybe emotional blackmail. Because when I went to B5 uh, and other companies, the thing was, oh, we can't give you all the money right now. You know, we need to pay about 3,000 staff. Look at our overhead costs. Look at the way the economy is in Ghana. Look at this. Look at that. And to be honest, if you're not strong of will, you might give in to some of these excuses and leave them and give them another week, another three days, another month, another two months, because they're always going to be excuses. So um, when that happened, I, I realized that sometimes maybe um, the officers who go there fall to these reasons that these organizations and companies give them when they are there to collect these huge sums of monies. Um, we're trying as much as possible to educate them that, you know, when you're owed this amount of money, at least take 70% of it or all of it, especially when the 14 day period is due. If they have done their productions, if they have been able to go through everything, we have done our part of the deal. We are supposed to take our monies. And so all these reasons, however, uh, um, whatever it is that mm. it might be that they're telling you, you need to also tell them your part of the story that you're running a business and for that matter you cannot take these excuses um so we are trying yeah. so much to change our business behavior with some of these businesses so that That's we are not so you know nice in letting it pile up that will be the narrative for private businesses that operate using ecg in ghana but what about the public sec public services or government institutions why do they owe ecg so much money it's almost the same it's almost the same story with the public service as well. Um, the public service has an interesting process when it comes to finance. And they also have a lot of operational costs and things they need to do. Those who have um, debt from um, elsewhere sitting on their books, they've given out contracts, they need to get this done. So when the money comes from um, the central government and it's time to dispense, they have to make decisions about where best it is to put these monies. And if ECG is considered a member of the family, if you understand what I mean, mm. also a government institution, uh, maybe ECG will be kind enough um, to hold on a bit whilst we use the money for other things. <laughs> but, that has caused most of these problems. Mm. But now we are, we, are, we are these same organizations, these same government organizations, when we sit with them, even though they owe us, the way they talk to us, because sometimes we are in need, um, we realize that, okay, if you owe me, but you are saying I am the problem in this mix, I think I have to do the right thing by coming for my money now. Because now the, it's not coming up as if it's because we were considerate, we're thinking, oh, you're also a government organization. Um, at some point, you're going to pay us because yeah, you're in the same system, we understand you. We're also getting our monies from the same government port and all that. Um, if you're going to say our operations are not handled well and you are part of the problem, I think we should start with well, you then. So, very well. Yeah. Leila, ACG is a distribution company and obviously has obligations to um, the transmission company. That should be great cool. Is ECG heavily indebted to the transmission company? Extremely. Extremely. Um, if, you, if you followed um, a presentation Greco made some two or three months ago, the headline wasn't even Greco. It was ECG owing Greco. That's right. Uh, because of the volume of the amount. It was it's... incredibly large. And it's not just Greco. Mm. There's VRA in the mix. So the value chain... Um, it's quite long, and ECG is almost at the bottom. Yes. So, uh, is, yeah, is 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 Gridco or anybody in that value chain considerate when it comes to the debts ECG owe? Exactly. It's it's the same. <laughs> what ECG is going through replicates 
<laughs> across the whole value chain. Everyone is being considerate. Everyone is being nice to each other. We are all treating each other like brothers and sisters, whereas it should be treated as a business purely because it's, it's pure money. And so the moment you're bringing in friendly relationships, you're compromising the value of the business. And when the business is going down, it will not take into consideration that you are making decisions based on friendliness or whatever it is. So <laughs> um, Gritco is super nice to ECG. Mm. We are grateful for them. VRA is very nice to ECG. We are also grateful for our relationship with them. But they are all going through the same fire now because they also have bills to pay. Mm. Gritco is supposed to pay the generators. And we are supposed to pay our independent power producers who are not so nice to be honest because they are running a business from an outside source and they are supposed to um, report to their stakeholders who are sometimes international based so they are not always nice and they will call on um, letters of credit which then goes to affect our general economic or financial setup so Lila. the reason why we are going through this now is because we are under some sort of a threat we need the money injected into our system immediately so that some of these um, irregularities will be stabilized. Leila, how much, in fact, um, looking at your revenue generation mix, how much do you get from, or what's the percentage of customers that you have on prepaid meters and what's the percentage of customers you have on postpaid meters? Percentage wise, I cannot give you that this morning. I would have to speak to our manager in charge mm. of um, billing. He would know. Um, you also know that the customers are categorized and in, in each category, there's a division. Some categories have both and some are strictly postpaid. So I'd have to get you that information. Okay. I wouldn't want to speak without um, the facts. Very well. Are there plans from ECG or plans um, that ECG is taking to make sure some of these uh, postpaid meter operators or owners are moved onto prepaid just to make sure uh, you don't incur so much debt moving on? Yes, it's always been a plan, um, especially for the MDAs, that's the ministries and departmental agencies or departments and agencies that are under government. It's always been preferred that they run under the prepayment system. However, there's been some pushback. Um, sometimes there's a fear that when they switch to prepaid, their operations might be interrupted if they don't have enough credit, right? Yeah. But it's been in law since 2015 that um, these government agencies run on prepayment so that they don't continue to rack up bills because when they rack up the bills, um, central government or our central financial system is forced to step in to rectify these irregularities. Um, with some places, they are very sensitive and so they cannot run on prepayment. Um, for instance, our hospitals, these are places that literally um, deals with life and death. And so if you put in a prepaid facility in uh, a place where they are doing an operation or a surgery or someone is in the ICU, and the power goes off and then someone has to go and buy credit and it takes one hour looking at sometimes the traffic areas you are literally putting people's life at risk and so some of these facilities cannot run on prepaid uh, prepayment system but um, now there's conversation about maybe looking at a mix of prepaid and postpaid mm. so in a hospital facility we can categorize the different um, buildings or the facilities within and then say okay for the area where the theaters are or where they have very heavy equipment that definitely need constant supply of electricity we're going to put pre um, post payment meters there and then in the administrative blocks and maybe the opd and other areas that are not um, directly connected to life and death we can look at prepaid systems so that their bills are not all racked up onto you payment before we bring the conversation to an end um, I have one final question ECG seems to have a lot of money out there that they haven't been able to collect ECG consistently goes to the PURC asking for tariff adjustments so they could deliver quality service to the good people of Ghana 
Uh, and as it stands, it's quite clear that the few who pay their bills promptly and the few who pay their who buy who use the prepaid service seem to be your main target when it comes to tariff adjustment. A lot of people say ECG have not been fair to the few who pay. Uh, and if ECG were a bit um, hands-on with regard to chasing their debts and collecting their debts, we will not be dealing with consistent requests for um, power increment. Uh, what, 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 what do you have to say about that? It's all a matter of leadership. We, we have a leader now who is trying to rectify that situation. Um, these assertions made by various people, it could be true, it could be false. And PRC takes a lot of things into consideration. It's not just um, commercial losses. There's transmission losses, and there's also the forex losses. Um, there are a number of things that people need to consider when they are discussing the business of electricity um, distribution. Even though this case that you have just elaborated could be, it is also a fact that we are trying to improve our operations and improve the network system in general. And for the people that we have captured in our system, whom we are providing, I believe, quality service to, we are doing right by them. That is why PRC is the one regulating the space. It is not ECG that on its own is regulated. And even when we want sometimes some different adjustments, we don't get it. But we know that if we're able to collect more of our revenue, um, it would be, th there will be more ease in our operations. And that's what we are trying to do. Um, mm. The new leadership that we have in the company is very interested in how much we're able to collect, pay off our bills, um, ease of the system, a bit and then we can look at some of these tariff readjustments if they need be but yeah fair point thank you leila abubakar for joining me on the happy morning show this morning and we wish you all the best in your you. endeavors you.